Hey, it's me, MLB, with many asks. I've come back to do a part two of Reclaimed. I think I'll leave it at this, though, after this part, as I've got so many other characters to do. So I won't be extending this one shot further. But having said all of that, I hope you enjoy this and enjoy your time with Shigaraki, who isn't being teased and pranked for once. Enjoy. Although everything happened very quickly, you went with it, letting Shigaraki take you by the hand and lead you back out into the hallway. Were you ready to jump back into a relationship with him? You still didn't trust him fully, but that kiss brought all the good times back and you almost forgot about the years of pain in the aftermath, wondering where he had gone and how he had bypassed your quirk. Now heading down the hallway, you were led into another room where there were a number of other people waiting, waiting for what you had no idea, but they were all just sitting or standing in there. I found him, Shigaraki announced to the group, holding up your hand that was clasped in his. You looked around at everyone, then at him. Had he planned this? Not only does Wyan have a valuable quirk, he's also mine, and I was never going to let him get away from me, Shigaraki said protectively to the group. Your heart kind of melted a little at that one, not going to lie. Any questions? Shigaraki asked, his beady one eye shooting daggers at anyone who even so much as looked like they were going to say anything. No one spoke for a second, then a guy who was covered in a tightly fitted skin suit stepped forwards. Uh, yes, no. What role will Wyan be playing, aside from being your bot- but this strange person didn't get to finish that sentence because they slapped themselves in the face to halt that sentence, and good thing too, as it appears it wasn't going to be an appropriate comment. Wayan will be by my side, doing my will, Shigaraki replied, and the sass inside you built. Um, excuse me, what is this about me doing your will? You thought internally, making a mental note to question Shigaraki about it later and make it known that you weren't just going to roll over and expose your belly, not after what he had put you through before. He needed to be reminded that you were the top in the relationship before and it was going to be the same this time around. No sir, this king wasn't about to bend the knee to no one. What if Wyan isn't on board? A guy with gnarled burnt skin over 90% of his body asked from the back of the room, keeping his head down, but his striking turquoise eyes glared out from behind a heavy black fringe. Good point, he reads the room well. You thought, as you then turned your head to hear and see the reply from your man. You weren't about to block his shot, but he'd better reply correctly. Oh no, Wyan, we have a lot of history. Shigaraki replied evasively. Mm, that's a small response for someone who had such a large mouth. You sassed internally. You must have given away your internal thoughts with your body movement, so, because another member of the group stood up and walked over to you. She was a shorter girl. She looked like she was only old enough to be called a girl, and she took your other hand and grinned up at you. You seem really sweet. I bet you taste sweet too, she gushed, and you immediately felt like she was a lot more deadly than she appeared. Next second, her arm that was holding yours was grabbed by Shigaraki and his voice dropped into a threatening growl. Don't touch him, he said in warning, and she let go of you immediately. Anyone else have any comments? Shigaraki asked in a threatening voice, now a little annoyed that everyone hadn't accepted you as quickly as he would have liked. No one else dared to speak, but you were about ready to go anyway. You still had questions for your man. Um, it's nice to have met you all, you said to the silent room. Now if you'd excuse us, I have some questions for Tom, I mean Shigaraki. Tom! The girl gushed and Shigaraki stiffened. Only Wayan can call me that, he replied. She closed her mouth immediately. Taking the opportunity of the awkwardness that followed, you turned and beckoned Shigaraki to follow you. Back out of the hallway you walked, making straight for the bedroom again. You figured it would be the safest to talk there. Level with me, you said firmly, the minute that you and Shigaraki were alone together. Are you using me? You grabbed his wrist and placed your fingers over his pulse, feeling your quirk rush through you. No, he stated calmly. I'm not using you. I need you. What for? You asked, still holding his wrist with quirk activated. You know your current workplace? He asked. Yes. He replied with an eyebrow raised. We need funds. No, Tom, I'm not going to be a criminal. You stated firmly. You said you would be mine. Shigaraki replied lowly, the stress already starting to rise in his veins. You can't come marching back in after four years and demand things of me. You snapped, gripping his wrist a little firmer. I will not be dragged into villainous activities because of you. Till death do us part. He uttered, then it's time to die. You stated, making direct eye contact. You're not forcing me to do anything, Tom. I'm my own person. He pursed his lips and stared at you. 
This wasn't going how he envisaged it. Having said your piece and not knowing what else to do, you let his wrist go and stepped back. This is it then, you said. No. He said quickly, reaching out with one hand as if to grab you to stop you from leaving. His voice broke a little when he called for you, and you caught a glimpse of that scared, vulnerable man that you'd come to know beforehand, and it pulled on your heartstrings. You knew he needed you more than just an accomplice. He still wasn't whole without you. There might still be some time to correct his ways. Don't, don't leave me, he suddenly said with full vulnerability on show. You knew his past. You knew his fears of abandonment. It was cruel of you to toy with him like this if you didn't truly intend on leaving. Did you intend on leaving? There was a part of you that was begging you to walk out now and a part of you that, that was reminding you of how much you needed this man in your life. I'm here to support you as a person, but I won't be involved in criminal activity, he said slowly. You say, person, he said as he slowly walked towards you, like he was worried that if he rushed, he'd scare you away. Support me as a person, but I want you to support me as a boyfriend. I don't understand how you can call me your boyfriend so easily. After so long, he said, looking him in his one eye as he stopped in front of you. My feelings have not changed in four years, he said, and although you didn't use your quirk, you were sure he was correct. So what do we do now? You asked, swallowing thickly as he removed the severed hand of his from his face and tossed it aside. What's up to you? He replied, giving himself over to your control. That kiss that you had shared before had been dancing in the back of your mind, and you really did want another of those, so followed through, your lips meeting his in a heated kiss. It was a few hours later now that you and he had settled, comfortable with each other again. He left for a bit to address his league, and then returned to you. I have everything under control, he stated as he entered the room again. You don't need to do anything. You are here to be with me, and that's all. But we do need to move to another location. So soon? You ask, getting up off the bed. You'll be in a much nicer place, he said with a smirk that pulled from underneath the dead hand of father. I want only the best for my man. You withheld your eye roll, but man, this man was doing too much. Come, he commanded, beckoning you to pick your things up and follow him. Tailing him out of the building, you found a white van waiting for you. Get in, he gestured, so you did so, clambering into the back of it where he sat down beside you. You looked through the small window that separated the front cabin from the back of the van and noticed the patchwork villain with black hair was in the passenger seat of the van and the, one of the other members, who you hadn't spoken to nor had they spoken to you at the meeting, was in the driver's seat. He was a mutant type, lizard-esque, with swept back purplish pink hair. Hey, Spinner, the black-haired passenger commented in a low voice, addressing today's driver. Go easy with your driving, yeah? You make me sick every time you get in the driver's seat. I learned my driving from gaming days of Grand Theft Auto. What do you expect? The driver named Spinner replied. If you drive like a criminal, you'll make me act like a criminal. The black-haired passenger com commented. Aren't we on the same team, Darby? Spinner asked, flexing his fingers around the steering wheel. Anyway, Tomorrow says we've got precious cargo today. If we have something precious to Tomorrow on board, then I'll do whatever I need to do to deliver it safely. None of that had anything to do with driving. The passenger Darby deadpanned. I don't care who tomorrow is playing footsies under the table with. If I get sick, you're all going to wear it. Drive. Came the sudden command from Shigaraki from the back seat next to you, and the van started up. You better watch it, Darby threatened as a last-ditch warning to Spinner before the van started to move. All was quiet initially, as the van rolled gently out onto the road and then started heading off. But as the journey got underway, members of the league started to chat. You weren't sure exactly what they were talking about at first, but then it became more apparent that these fine people in the van with you had just recently robbed a bank. And when I say recently, it sounded like it was not even a few hours ago. Piece of cake. I want cake, the split personality member said as he chatted with the girl. It's because we're such a good team twice, the girl replied, placing her hand on his arm and grinning with a blush as she spoke to him. Maybe we could be more than a team. Marry me, Toga, twice, the split personality guy replied. As they continued to chat, you started to relax a little, but all of a sudden the van lurched and you heard Darby swear at Spinner for his driving. It wasn't me, Spinner replied defensively, checking his mirrors to see what it was that had caused the van to swerve all of a sudden. Whoops, look like we've got company, he said lowly. Yeah, I've just seen him, Darby replied, looking out the side mirror. Boss, do you need me? A rather sturdy looking member said, pointing to themselves. Yes, Magne, Shigaraki replied. You will be needed. 
What about me? Toga asked brightly, seeming very keen to get in on the action. Big Sis Magne can't have all the fun. You will all be needed, Shigaraki added. Spinner, Darby. He then addressed the two in the front seat. Who is it? Heroes, of course, Spinner replied with a scowl on his face. What was he expecting us to say? Darby uttered under his breath, but loud enough for you to hear. You reached across and placed your hand on Shigaraki's knee, letting him know that you were unsure of this situation and needed some reassurance from him. Don't worry, he replied to you, placing his hand on top of yours but keeping his pinky finger lifted. We'll deal with them. Something else hit the van and Spinner swerved once more. It's rock lock, Darby said, seeing the hero in the side mirror, leaning out of the car that was Duke giving chase behind them. Get rid of them, Shigaraki ordered. My pleasure, Magne said, standing up and making her way to the back door of the van and unlocking it. I have the grandest plan, the magician-looking character said, standing up with grace as he placed one hand across his chest and stood as if addressing a whole audience. What is it? Toga asked excitedly. We'll draw the hero car in close so that Magne can jump on, and then once she's dealt with them, I'll capture her and recall her with my compression quirk, the villain accomplice announced proudly. That'll work, Spinner agreed from the front seat. Good thinking, Compress. I know it will. It's the ace up my sleeve, after all. Why, only the greatest of magicians know the best tricks to use in such situations. I... Okay, just get it done before I smack this lizard. Darby grumbled from the passenger seat, holding onto the right side of his head, obviously car sick with all the swerving. They're taking the bait, Magne said excitedly as soon as she threw the van door open and saw the hero car speed up. Get ready, Compress said in a steady voice as the car approached slowly. The hero, Rocklock, had now climbed atop the car and was riding it like a surfboard behind the van, waiting for a chance to jump from the car to the back of the van, obviously confident in his skills to take down the villains. Magne tensed, waiting for him to launch, and the second he did, she threw herself out of the van at him, punching him square in the face before being recalled into a small marble that neatly returned to Compress. Close the doors, Shigaraki shouted, giving orders to Toga and Twice, who grabbed the handles on the swinging doors and slammed them shut. You didn't get to see the aftermath of the pursuing heroes, but you did hear Ty's squeal and a sickening crash sound. It wasn't what you wanted to hear, but at least you were safe for now. You'll always be protected by me, Shigaraki said lowly, as he turned and stared at you from under his thick, messy fringe. You're untouchable with us. There we go, I had a little bit of league activity in there, got to see some characters that haven't really made um, an appearance on my... Uh, channel yet I say yet because I do intend to expand uh, into many different characters many different fandoms um, so there is reclaimed I'll see you next week for a different one shot see you then